everyone. Welcome back to the Balanced Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. I am so glad to have you here listening. If this is your first time listening to the Soul on Fire podcast, welcome to our tribe. We have an amazing tribe of humans, listeners who I feel so lucky to have here. We have our Soul on Fire podcast tribe on Facebook and that group just never ceases to amaze me with how encouraging and awesome everyone is to each other how many questions get answered in there and how many of us are into all of this wellness, high vibe, mystical kind of stuff. It's really fun. So go ahead and type in Soul on Fire Podcast Tribe on Facebook and I will add you to the group if you're interested in being a part of our tribe and keeping the conversation going. I also wanted to remind you guys that if you feel inspired to rate and review this podcast and subscribe to it on iTunes, then I am so happy to send you my blogging tips and tricks document that I send to everyone who rates and reviews the podcast. And this week, we actually have something added to that bundle because our guest today, who I will get into in a second, but she is my amazing acupuncturist and doctor of oriental medicine and doctor of acupuncture, Kara Moramarco. She is kind enough to add a session, a free giveaway for a session with her to this bundle. So if you rate and review the podcast on iTunes and subscribe and also follow Kara on Instagram, she is Aculand on Instagram. And that's dr. Kara with a K dot Aculand. And we'll put that in the show notes so that you can find her. She is offering a love cupping session. And if you've never heard of that before, it's because Kara has totally invented, along with her mom, love cupping. It is cupping. I'm sure you've seen photos of people being cupped on Instagram or on social media, or maybe you've been cupped yourself. It's an amazing practice that many acupuncturists do. And we will get into why they do that, what it's good for, all the health benefits, what it feels like, and all that good stuff. And Kara and her mom have pretty much invented heart-shaped cups so that when you get cupped, there are hearts all over your back instead of circles, and it's the cutest thing ever. So if you live in LA or if you're close enough to LA to come have a session with Kara, definitely enter our giveaway and you could potentially get a free love cupping session. So once you rate and review the podcast and follow her, just send a screenshot of confirmation to my email email jordan at thebalancedblonde.com and I will go ahead and enter you into the giveaway. So I started seeing Kara about maybe about six months ago and I had been through a couple different acupuncturists, people who I really liked and I was seeing a different acupuncturist when I first started seeing Kara but I think there's something to be said for being consistent with one practitioner and having them really get to know you, get to know your physical ailments, what you need. And right away, I could just tell that Kara had a knack for exactly what I needed. I was looking for help with so many different things. And I think before I saw Kara, I didn't even realize how badly I needed oriental medicine, eastern medicine in my life. I was suffering from super severe gut problems, insomnia. I got an IUD put in a couple months ago. I had a really adverse reaction and got it taken out. And of course, as you guys know, well, if you've never listened to the podcast and you don't know, but if you do follow me on social media and if you've listened to recent episodes of this podcast, then you might know that I have had full body hives 
for about eight weeks, so bad that I haven't been able to sleep. I haven't been able to function. I've been so itchy. I've had to cancel so many work engagements. I haven't even had the energy or the inspiration to do yoga or do any of the things that I love because I can't even be in a heated room. It's been really painful. It's been very trying on my psyche and not to mention my body. I also found out during this time that I have parasites and tapeworms and all this crazy stuff. I've had pretty bad acne lately and I would say my consistent work with Kara has been such a lifesaver, such a godsend because she really knows my body. She really understands me. She's very young. So she completely understands where I'm coming from and what I need. Not just because she's young, but I feel that we really vibe with each other. And I think that's so important when looking for a Eastern medicine practitioner, acupuncturist, cupping therapist, someone who is really just knows their stuff, but also who really gets you and who really vibes with you. So I really connect to her and all of my Southern California listeners and anyone who might be coming soon on a trip to SoCal. Definitely enter our giveaway. Show Kara some love on Instagram regardless. She has the Instagram that I mentioned and then she has her love cupping Instagram, which is just at love cupping. And she is truly amazing. So I'm so excited to dive into this episode I'm so grateful for everybody listening. And if you've had any questions about acupuncture, cupping, or anything of the like, then I think and hope that you'll really enjoy and that it will answer some questions. And if you do not live in Los Angeles and you're looking for a practitioner near you, just keep in mind that you want to see someone who is educated, someone who has done the work. Kara will get into this in the episode, what it takes to become an acupuncturist, and it is not a simple road. My good friend Chloe, shout out to Chloe Dove, is doing her acupuncturist schooling right now, and she goes to the school where Kara's dad is actually the dean, and that's where Kara graduated from. So I know through Chloe and now through Kara, what an intense practice it is to become an acupuncturist and a doctor of oriental medicine. I have so much respect for the practice and I'm just excited to spread the word of acupuncture to all of you because if you're listening, you're here for a reason. And if you've been thinking about trying acupuncture or cupping, but you haven't yet, maybe this is a sign from the universe that it's time. So please enjoy, sit back, relax, and know that I love you. I'm so grateful to have you here. All right, guys, I am sitting here with my amazing acupuncturist and doctor of oriental medicine and doctor of acupuncture, Kara Morimarco, who I have been seeing for, I think it's been about six months, would you say? And I've been more consistent lately, so we can definitely speak to the importance of consistency with acupuncture in this episode. And Kara, I'm just so glad that you're here. And I know that everybody is so excited to hear from you. So just tell us a little bit about who you are and introduce yourself to the tribe. Hi. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited as well. So yes, my name is Kara, and I'm a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine here in Los Angeles, California. Uh, so I have a interesting history with this. Both of my parents are actually doctors of oriental medicine. Um, so I really grew up with this, um, you know, spent my whole life surrounded by this amazing healing medicine. And I am so happy to be practicing this healing art here in Los Angeles and helping everyone feel better. Yes, and you definitely do. I didn't realize that your mom was also an acupuncturist. 
Yeah, so they actually met in England where my mom was going to acupuncture school because back in the day, this was like 35 years ago, they didn't even have acupuncture schools in California. So my dad was already a licensed acupuncturist and they met in London while she was a student for acupuncture and then moved back here to California. I love that. That's so amazing. And another thing about your dad is that he is the dean of Emperor's College, the acupuncture school here in LA that my good friend Chloe goes to. And I always love that connection. So that's just pretty awesome that you grew up with acupuncture so at the forefront of your life. Yeah, yeah. So yes, Emperor's College in Santa Monica Uh, Definitely a great school. Yes, he's the dean of the master's and doctoral program there. Wow, which you did both of, which we will get into. And something that I've always been really curious about is, did you always know that you wanted to go into acupuncture, especially since you grew up in it, or was this later in life? Yeah, so right away, I didn't know. Um, I always loved the body. I was a figure skater for 10 years, so... I was really into athletics and, you know, how to heal the body naturally because I grew up with it and knew if I got an injury, acupuncture always fixed it right away. So I I liked that path of medicine. And I actually did my undergrad in kinesiology and exercise science because I knew I wanted to work with the body, but I just didn't really know exactly in which way. And then, you know, I was going to school with kinesiology and I didn't particularly want to be a physical therapist or a personal trainer. Uh, and my mom mentioned, well, how about acupuncture? And I went to the school for an intro and was completely hooked. And that's how it started. Wow. So this is something that you always kind of knew that you wanted to do. Very soul on fire, which makes me so happy. So something that I wanted to talk about is the process of going to school for acupuncture because I never knew until my friend Chloe started doing this, how rigorous it is and how many years it takes. So can you kind of walk us through that process? Right. It's a very rigorous program. It's a four years master program. And that's usually with uh, an additional two years undergrad before that. So we have extensive training in Western medicine, herbal medicine, oriental medicine, like the Chinese medicine theory and acupuncture. So it's very comprehensive and yeah, pretty intense. Could you choose which one of those to focus on? So no, it's actually comprehensive. So uh, yeah, and especially in California, we have a state licensing exam. So we have to have specific hours for each section. It's pretty much 25% of each of those. Wow, that is so cool. You know, I am very fascinated by herbal medicine and just want to soak in everything and learn all of it. Yes, so we know hundreds of Chinese herbs. That's so cool. And everybody listening pretty much knows by now that I have these crazy hives all over my body, very uncomfortable. If you're listening and you don't know, I literally have hives from my head to my toes, all over my back, can't sleep, can't move, super uncomfortable. Kara has been helping you, Kara, have been helping so much. You have me on so many different cooling herbs and I just think it's really fascinating. So maybe we can talk about some of the cooling herbs that you've put me on and how you decided on that blend and other blends for other people. Yeah, so there's classical Chinese herbal formulas that have been used for thousands of years. Um, You know, they've really tested to see what works. So a lot of times we'll use those for a particular symptom or it might be a combination of formulas or specific herbs. It's all very individualized. Yeah, it's pretty amazing the range of things that you guys learn and the range that you, well, yeah, that you get to learn. So I think we should probably backpedal and explain what is acupuncture. So acupuncture is part of a healing medicine that also, it's like oriental medicine or Chinese medicine. And I say oriental because it's not just Chinese. There's Japanese style acupuncture, which I really love. And then there's also Korean. Um, But Chinese is kind of the main one a lot of people know about. But it also includes herbal medicine, Tai Chi, Qigong, 
heat therapy, cupping therapy, you know, lifestyle and nutritional aspects. So acupuncture is a branch of that. And it's been practiced for thousands of years. So with acupuncture, there are like 12 main meridian systems, which you can think of as like energy channels that flow throughout the body. And so with acupuncture, we can access those channels through the use of the needles where we place in specific points in the body to get an effect on the organ system or the energy that we're trying to balance. Wow. So the needle placement is really based on the 12 meridians? Yeah, there's uh, some main ones and then there's also some extra points and other extra meridians, but those are the main ones that we focus on. So cool. So tell us, what kind of things does acupuncture help with? So many things. <laughs> uh, a lot of times when people think of acupuncture, they think of it being used for pain, which is very, very common. Um, neck pain or back pain, knee pain. It's very effective. Also, acupuncture is great for immunity, you know, to enhance and boost the immune system, energy, insomnia, sleep issues, Anxiety is a big one. It's so good to help relax the nervous system, digestive issues. And I treat a lot of women's health, like fertility or PCOS, yeah. uh, and a big thing, uh, painful periods. It's yeah. so effective. That's something that I feel is really, really relative to this listenership. Really relevant, actually, is the word I'm looking for. Because I hear from so many people who are dealing with female health issues, endometriosis, fibroids, painful periods, missed periods, going off of birth control, going on to birth control. So tell us a little bit about how acupuncture can help with that kind of female stuff. Right. Yeah. So it's actually very common. And a lot of times when you know, women go to Western doctors, they're just put on the pill right away, you know, whether it's painful periods or irregular periods. Um, and that's really not treating the root of the problem. It's kind of covering it up. So we really like to try to treat the root of the issue to help with lasting results. So if it's irregular periods, we'll work on balancing the hormones that way. And it's all about the yin and yang, which a lot of people have probably heard of, but maybe they're not familiar with. Um, so we can talk a little bit more about that yeah, if you're interested. Yeah. So uh, everything in the world is based on yin yang, but they're not like 100% yin or 100% yang. Because if you notice the symbol, there's that little circle of the other color inside. Mm -hmm. And that shows that there's a little bit of one within the other. So for example, like hormones, um, both males and females both have some testosterone and estrogen. Obviously for females, there's more estrogen, which is the yin and the testosterone would be the yang. So it's, it's about the balance. And if those are out of whack, like if there's too much testosterone, you may have some of those symptoms like a lot of women with the PCOS have with the facial hair growth and things like mm -hmm. that. So that's one aspect of it. Another example would say like the moon is yin, the sun is yang, water is yin, fire is yang. Rest is yin, like the yin yoga is more restful. Mm -hmm. And then yang is um, more activity. Yeah, that's so interesting to think. I've never thought of a yin-yang as having each of the other side in it, but it makes so much sense because as women, we do need testosterone, even though estrogen is what so many of us think of and vice versa too. So that's a true balance. Right. So we really aim to balance the body. And that's like the kind of key aspect of Chinese medicine is harmonizing and balancing to get the chi or energy flow to be optimal. That's so cool. I love the approach. Clearly, it's one of my 
favorites, my go-to. Let's talk about eczema because you have helped me so much with my eczema. When I started sharing about having such terrible eczema and hives on social media, I couldn't believe whatsoever how many people suffer and how many people are really at a loss for what to do with such terrible rashes. So what is your recommendation? Yeah. So eczema is a complex condition and it's not the easiest thing, honestly. And if you have dealt with it, you understand that. Um, So with acupuncture, we try to help cool down the system. So usually with eczema, there might be a lot of redness or heat itching. So we help cool down the blood and also help it with the flow. So there can be stagnation in there too. Uh, Some people experience more dampness, like oozy. So we will reduce the dampness with the acupuncture points that we use or the herbs. And there's this aspect of wind, uh, which is kind of uh, sounds a little mysterious, um, but wind comes and goes. And so does eczema and like hives. The hives can like just come right away and disappear. So we use specific points that deal with releasing this wind. You know, you can catch a cold. That's a wind symptom too. So depending on your particular condition and internal constitution, we will balance out the the meridians to get it flowing. Yes, as we've been working towards. And would there be any other Chinese medicine techniques for cooling? Yeah. So diet too, that's important. We would want to avoid a lot of the spicy foods uh, in Chinese medicine. Also, some of the seafood, like shrimp, can be causing even more wind and this like yang energy. So we will want to have more cooling foods and not so much spicy or damp, greasy, which basically like all that good stuff yeah. can create dampness. Too much sweets and, you know, fried and dairy yeah. are not good. Yeah, that all makes sense. I've been trying to focus on the cooling foods and not use all the spices. It's weird. I didn't even realize how many spices I was using all the time in my cooking, but I so gravitate toward all the heat spices, not all the cooling ones. So that's something I need to work on in this season of my life. And the next question for you, something that a lot of people have been asking about is A, the organ system, because I know you talk a lot about it, and B, the five elements that acupuncture works with and kind of just touch on all those. Sure. Uh, So the five elements you might be a little familiar with, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. So each one of those have different organs that are related to it, that correspond to the element. So the goal is to get them all like happy and balanced and healthy and working properly together. Because if one system is off, it can affect the other. Uh, An example is what we call wood, like overacting on earth. So it's a very common one in today's society. So basically the wood element would be like your liver. And in Chinese medicine, the liver is responsible for the free flow and movement of qi. So when the liver is happy, everything is flowing well and the energy is moved throughout the body and functioning properly. That can easily become like stuck which we call this liver chi stagnation. And basically, if you live in LA or in a big city, you probably have some liver chi stagnation. If you have to drive, it's like an obstacle course. So we're like in this fight or flight mode and that can cause some stress on the body. When that becomes stressed, like I said, the energy can become a little stuck. So it's also very common for people to have some digestive issues like bloating. So that is the earth element and having the wood stressed will directly weaken the earth element, which is like our spleen stomach, which is our digestive function. So when one becomes stressed, the other one will weaken. So with the acupuncture, we work on de-stressing one system and then balancing and like strengthening the other to get everything working properly and feeling happy. That's so interesting. Well, I know that a lot of people struggle with 
bloating and all sorts of digestive issues. That's what actually originally brought me to acupuncture. And lately I've been so much better with my digestion. I still notice myself getting very bloated with everything, like foods that I like, like vegetables and lentils, Mm -hmm. et cetera. Like I will always be so bloated afterwards, but but they also That's make true. me feel good. Unfortunately, some of the healthiest foods do are just notorious for bloating. Right. And what would you say for that? Like, what if someone's at home and they're not going to go to acupuncture that right. night uh, and they feel really bloated? Would there be home remedies that you would suggest? Uh, yes. Yeah, so there's actually some really good acupressure points for digestive, you know, pain, like bloating. Um, there's one that's located about three inches below your knee. Um, we can maybe show people some of these images that you can just massage yourself. This one called Stomach 36. Um, oh, yeah. We can put those in the show notes if you have yeah. like, a link to the oh, photos. Definitely. But so as far as the bloating and digestion, I'll probably talk a little bit about Chinese medicine, the way we view eating. Yeah, tell us. Okay, so in Chinese medicine or Chinese nutritional therapy, there are some basics and everyone is different. So this is not like a cookie cutter approach because some people may need more cooling foods while others may need more warming foods. But in general, we like to have, let's say, for example, your veggies. Instead of like a big raw salad, which can is very popular these days, mm-hmm. you know, there's you know, some benefits for some people, but generally we like to have the food more steamed, like warm food. So instead of a big cold raw salad, steamed veggies or a soup, it's just much easier for the body to break down and digest. Because if you imagine your stomach like a cauldron, like with a nice fire burning below it, that's our digestive fire. And that helps you know, break our food down so we can process it and use it for energy. If you're putting a lot of like cold or frozen things on top of that and eating that every day, especially I would say, sorry to say this, but like your morning smoothies, if they're all, I I know, I know if they're all frozen, especially in the winter, it can just, you know, it can really create some of that bloating. So Mm -hmm. I really recommend just trying to you know, have, if you could still have your smoothie, just maybe not make it frozen and see how your body reacts. If you feel much better and your stomach bloating goes down, then maybe that's a good option for you. Some people have a lot more heat so they can get away with colder foods. And it also depends on the season. So Chinese medicine is really into eating according to the seasons. If it's cold outside, you're not going to want a lot of cold food. That would be a key aspect. Also, you might have heard like don't have ice cold water. Yeah. That's a big one in a lot of different cultures too, I believe. It can just help, you know, having more room temperature water can make things flow. Because if you think of cold like an iceberg, that is stuck. It's this big stuck ice energy. Mm -hmm. And that can create in the body pain. So especially for women with really bad periods, cramps and clots, I really recommend them to cut back on the cold and icy foods and drinks, especially a week before the period. And you might even just notice amazing results just with that one change. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've been pretty good about the room temperature water thing, um, mostly because I prefer room temperature water, but also in Ayurveda, that's similar with the warming foods and room temperature water. And what about drinking water with food? Is is there something about that in Chinese yeah, medicine? In Chinese medicine too, we don't really like to drink a lot of water with the food because that just dilutes all of your digestive juices, mm-hmm. probably similar to Ayurvedic medicine, I would assume. Mm-hmm. There's similarities, but differences too. Yeah. So trying to have water more on the empty stomach or just without large meal. Yeah, that's that's so helpful. That's helped me a ton with bloating and digestive issues and that's great. All of it. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. So chakra balancing. This is something I'm so interested in because you're wearing your little chakra necklace. Oh, yeah. It's so mm-hmm. pretty. And people who listen to this podcast are, well, for the most part, very into the chakra system mm-hmm. and 
kind of tapping into balancing everything Mm -hmm. on a spiritual level. So how does acupuncture work with chakras? Yeah, acupuncture works really well with chakras. It's It's a different system, but we can use the acupuncture points that are related and corresponding to the chakras to help balance. So there's the point at the top of the head we use a lot. Actually, it's the one in your little video Instagram story. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's called Do 20, and it's at the top of your head. You can think of that as the crown chakra. And then we move on to your third eye point in between your eyebrows. It's an acupuncture point we use called yin tong. Um, And then go all the way down the throat and the heart, Mm -hmm. solar plexus, and... uh, sacral and root chakra. So there's acupuncture points that actually correspond to those and can help help balance those energies. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a throat needle before. Yeah. Did that one today. (laughs) You did on yourself? Not on myself. On another Oh, on somebody else. Do you do acupuncture on yourself? I do when I like desperately need it. (laughs) Um, I could stick a few in like my arms and and feet, but I need someone else to get like back points and things like that. So for the chakra balancing, would that be, you would do all of them at once Mm -hmm. on someone and no other points? We would do them uh, at once first, then we could add a few more points, you know, as a supplement, but just the chakra points can be a treatment all by itself. Although we sub, we don't do the actual root one. (laughs) We use a point on the elbow or the knee to take care of that. That corresponds with it. Okay, guys. So I want to tell you about something that will get you $60 worth of free groceries and not just free groceries, but free organic, premium, natural vegan friendly, paleo friendly, however you prefer to eat friendly groceries. And that is by going to thrivemarket.com slash blonde. Not only will you get $60 worth of free groceries by going there, but you will also get free shipping and a 30-day free trial to Thrive Market's website. So I know that you guys will love them. They are basically an online retailer for groceries, for home products, for anything that you would get at the grocery store. But something really special about them is that you can get between 25 and 50% off of what you would be getting anywhere else. Think any organic natural grocery store around the country. You can get it for that much less at Thrive Market. And the reason for that is because they have taken out the middleman and they purchase straight from the brand. So it's good for the brand. It's good for the consumer. It's really easy to eliminate that step and you can get everything you need there from non-GMO food, snacks, vitamins, supplements, personal care products, eco-friendly cleaning supplies, which I have stocked up on, safe and non-toxic beauty products, kitchen staples, home goods, even organic baby food and all that kind of stuff. It's shipped straight to your door, which is super easy. So I want to tell you guys a couple things that I love that I have ordered from Thrive Market that have made my life really easy because every single time I'm making vegetables, I tend to run out of some really important ingredients that you need to be roasting veggies and that is coconut oil, cooking spray. I like the brand Spectrum that they have carried on Thrive. It's good for medium to high heat. It is perfect for, like I said, I always roast vegetables in them, but you could also, you could do anything that's using the stove or the oven. So you can make eggs with it. You can add it to your kitchery. Speaking of kitchery, which you can find the recipe on my blog, I love to buy Fourth and Heart Ghee on Thrive Market's website. I also love, 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 and you guys have seen me posting about these, especially this week because they're so good eating evolved keto cups. I was so excited to find those on Thrive. And whatever it is that you're looking for, you can probably find it on Thrive Market's website. So you can shop by category. You can shop by price. You can shop in so many different ways. It's actually really, really fun. So to get your shopping on, head to thrivemarket.com slash blonde. 
The link is also in the show notes to make it super easy for you guys to get those $60 worth of free groceries, no strings attached, 30-day free trial, and free shipping on those groceries. I love offering you guys this kind of deal because it's literally free products, free groceries, and it's really premium. None of the quality is compromised. So it's just, it's a special place, Thrive Market. Check them out, show them some love, and we will dive back into this episode with Kara. I'm always so fascinated about all of the corresponding Like I'm always asking you when you're putting a needle in my foot or in my knee, what is that for? And because everything corresponds to something. So I know you've been putting needles in my feet and my arms lately. Is that all for the cooling of the blood? Yeah. So those are ones. So meridians run through our whole body. So there might be a point on your arm, like the one on the elbow is a really good one to help clear heat. So it, where your problem is doesn't necessarily mean that's where the needle goes. So we call these like local and distal points. So you might treat locally, like if you have a headache, we might put one in your head, but then there's also a great headache point on your foot. So that's the distal part of the treating. Wow. That's so interesting. It's pretty cool. Stuff. Yeah. There's so many different interconnected things in the body. Like we were talking about the other day, the ear, Mm -hmm. how like she, well, for everyone listening, Kara was looking at my ear and saw that there was a red vein going near like the point where... It was like the dermatitis uh, skin condition. Exactly. And then how then you said like looking at a picture of an ear is also like kind of looking at a fetus. Yeah. It's it's like a holograph or um, it's a microsystem. So basically it's like an upside down fetus, like reflexology. So the whole entire body is mapped out on your ear. That's so fascinating. That's so crazy. So that's something, yeah, people can probably look up a photo of also. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah. I think we should also talk about cupping. Oh yes. Cupping is my addiction. It feels so good. It is completely addicting. Yeah. And that's probably something I get the most questions about from people who mm-hmm. follow my blog to people in real life. Like, what is cupping? Does it hurt? What are the purposes? Does it actually work? Quote, unquote. Tell us everything about cupping. Yeah. Okay. So cupping is amazing. It definitely looks gnarly and scary. And if you don't know what it is, and have never had it, you might be a little um, weary of trying it, but it feels amazing. So cupping is a form of medicine that actually dates back thousands of years. You can find hieroglyphics that the Egyptians used like 5,000 years ago with the cupping instruments. And it's used in all different cultures, not just Chinese medicine, but like I said, the Egyptians. Um, it's very popular in the Middle East and in Russia. Like a lot of people will say, oh yeah, my grandmother used to cut me if I was sick. So cupping is used to help um, with, in Chinese medicine, we say like the qi and blood flow. So if you have any pain or tightness in the neck, knots, uh, it's just amazing to cup it away. <laughs> Yeah. And you use the ones with the fire. Mm -hmm. That's my preferred method. I like the fire cupping. So we use the fire to create the suction. Basically, it's like uh, the negative pressure. So it sucks oxygen out, which creates that suction. And you can think of it as like an inverse massage. So with massage, you're applying positive pressure. And with cupping, it's negative pressure. It's kind of helping the tissues come up a bit to give it you know, more space and basically fresh and oxygenated blood flow come to the area. Mm-hmm. And you can tell by the cupping marks if they're super dark and purple, it means you really needed it. Um, some of my patients that get, get cupped weekly almost have no marks after the session because they just have really good blood flow and have been getting it often. I think you asked about, does it hurt? Mm -hmm. It should be comfortable. It should be like a good pain. Like, you know, when you get massage and it's like, ow, but feels really good. So if you're ever uncomfortable, the suction can be adjusted to your comfort. So if it's, 
you know, too much pressure. We can make it lighter. It should always be comfortable and should really feel good. Yeah. I always tell people it hurts so good and it doesn't even hurt that bad. It's more like it's a lot of pressure. So feeling that pressure, if you have muscle tension, will feel really good. It's like that good pain. Exactly. Yeah. And you have your cute heart-shaped cups. Yes, they are coming out, getting released soon. So oh you can my God. be uh, sporting heart-shaped marks. <laughs> yes, everybody listening, you'll have to check back when her heart-shaped cups come out because yeah. she used them on me the other day um, before my back had hives. And I loved, They're I pretty loved cute, the idea. Right? They're so cute, yeah. yeah. So might as well make it fashionable too, right? <laughs> right. Oh my God, you're going to get... That's going to be such a viral it's pretty thing. fun. Yeah, so cool. So this is something people people ask me this question a lot um, when I said that you were coming on the podcast because acupuncture can treat so many things. When do you know it's time or feel that it's time to refer someone to a Western doctor? Yeah, um, very good question. And that's part of our responsibility as you know, we're in California, actually, we're considered primary care physicians, but we need to know when to refer, of course. So just based on our training, we'll know when, you know, there's these red flags that, you know, look a little more serious. And it's always good to get checked by a specialist in that field, just to make sure that nothing very serious is going on. And then once we get the go ahead and know that things are cleared, we can treat accordingly with Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of like how you told me, you should probably see a dermatologist again because yeah. this stuff is kind of persisting. Yeah. Just it's always good to cover your bases. Yeah. That's what I think too. I think it's nice to have just a general balance of holistic, alternative, Eastern medicine with if you have something really serious going on and you have to take medication or a steroid cream or something just super serious, then I think the balance is smart. Absolutely. You know, Western medicine can be so amazing, like surgery, you know, yeah. if you have something uh -huh. serious, like you need to get it taken care of. And it's great that we have, you know, Western medicine, like antibiotics, when you absolutely need it. Of course, they should never be abused, but, you know, people were dying before they had penicillin. You know, yeah, so. so true. There are some herbal antibiotics too, but... Ooh, but, like what? You know, um, different herbs that can clear some of that toxic heat. Um, back in the day, you know, especially in China, when they didn't have antibiotics, they would use certain herbs for that. But, you know, generally speaking, if something is surgical, you know, definitely should be the last resort. And I would do acupuncture first. And usually that takes care of it. Mm -hmm. But like if you have acute appendicitis, you're going to need that out. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that's so helpful. So growing up in your house with your parents, both practicing this Eastern medicine, did you ever take antibiotics? I do not remember ever taking antibiotics when I was growing up. I didn't really get sick. I was very, very lucky and fortunate. My parents were into eating healthy. They would drive like two hours to buy organic produce. This was like 30 years ago That's before amazing. people knew what organic was. Um, but yeah, I grew up with herbs if I needed anything. And I can't even really remember when I took antibiotics for the first time. You're so lucky. I think I took antibiotics as a kid, like all the time. It's very, I was sick it's all common. the time. Yeah. And we just didn't know any better. I mean, my parents, if they had known better, they probably wouldn't have continued putting me on them. Was there ever a time that you resisted this Eastern medicine philosophy because it was such a part of your life as a child? I don't think I ever resisted it. I, I think it was nine when I had my first acupuncture treatments because I was a a dancer, a figure skater, and I like pulled my groin muscle and I needed acupuncture. But yeah, growing up, I was pretty healthy, luckily. Yeah. Did you grow up here? I grew up in Palm Springs. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. so cool. I mm -hmm. love Palm Springs. It was a nice place to grow up. I'll be there next weekend. It's very relaxing and beautiful. Yeah. That's so nice. 
Um, it kind of goes along with the whole like relaxing, calming <laughs> vibes of what your family does. That's so nice. So I'm always curious to hear about people's routines, especially people who are very healthy and spiritual, spiritually minded. So first, tell us about your morning routine. Well, my morning routine depends on if it's a work day or a weekend, but I generally, I just get up and go. Like I like my morning coffee and I don't, take it because I need it for energy. I just like the ritual and I like the taste. So make my coffee and I get in the car and well, first get dressed, Uh but you know, get in the car and and come to work. I'm fortunate that I just feel very grounded naturally. So I don't really have to do anything to ground myself in the morning. I feel good and I'm ready to go. That's amazing. I wish I felt grounded naturally. Maybe one day. Maybe more, more acupuncture. Because acupuncture, yeah. mm-hmm. I can't even tell you, I wake up and there are hours of routines that take place. And if I don't have time to do them, which of course, many days I don't, I feel the effects all day. Like today, I didn't have any time. I woke up at 7.30. I had to leave at 8.30. Jonathan lost his keys and we were like looking from them for them from the second that I woke up and I've been frazzled all day and I've been like tired because I didn't get enough sleep. So being naturally grounded, that's Mm -hmm. such a plus. That's so nice. And what about nighttime? Oh yeah. So I will talk about the sleep. I love my sleep. I think it's very important. I really probably wouldn't function this well if I had less sleep. I like my eight or nine hours. Mm -hmm. Well. I would say I go to bed a little later than I would like to. So in Chinese medicine, it's really important, especially for women, to get to bed by like 11. And mm-hmm. I know that can be hard for a lot of people, you know, depending on your work schedule and your partner's schedule. It can be easy to stay up late, but kind of like a key time is to try to go to sleep around that time just because that's when all those yin processes happen and replenishing. But yeah, I would say sleep is is definitely key. And I've heard that before. Anjali, my Ayurvedic practitioner, she says 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is like the replenishing time for the body. And I can't tell you how many times it's like 1030 and I'm still completely doing things. Mm -hmm. And I think of that and I'm like, oh God, got to get to bed. My body is like missing out on this key, very important time. It's so interesting because even if you get your eight hours of sleep, but they're between like two and you know, 10 a.m., it's not the same. Yeah, and that makes sense to me because when I do sleep from 2 to 10, for example, I don't feel rested because it still feels like that groggy hangover of being up late. Mm -hmm. So you have your go to bed early and Mm -hmm. is there anything else you do? Like, do you like to take baths or read books? Uh, So I'm, I'm a shower girl. I like to... You know, I have a long day at work or usually if after work, I'll do a workout. But basically, if I don't have that, as soon as I get home, I like to just take a hot shower. And that's kind of a way to loosen up my muscles because I, I do get, you know, I do a lot of, you know, hands-on mm-hmm. therapy and healing can take out a lot of energy. So I like to just take a hot shower and loosen up all the neck and shoulder muscles with the the water and it feels really good. And that kind of, I feel cleansed from the day. And um, then I like to watch some good shows. And, yeah, um, you were telling me about, about that one show. Yes, Outlander. I, yeah, um, I need to watch. And then reading is, is more for like the weekends to oh. read some pleasurable and mostly like educational women's health type books. Yes. Well, you're a fountain of knowledge. You know so much. It's like mind blowing. So Still so much more to learn. Yeah. So much more to learn. We have your whole bookshelf behind yeah. us. So many good things. So this was, this is a question that kind of comes from the skeptics mm-hmm. and what are the, the medical studies um, that have been done 
on acupuncture, Chinese medicine, what can we actually see that's Mm -hmm. tangible? Yeah. So there are still a lot of people that think acupuncture is like this pseudoscience and quackery and woo-woo, but it's actually very evidence-based. The whole doctoral program that I did was this quote-unquote evidence-based medicine. So for everything that we presented, it was all about the case studies and the research. So it is has been researched really well. It can be a little tricky because of this like placebo and, you know, effect and sham when we do acupuncture. Um, Because if you needle anywhere in the body, you're going to get an effect. But there are so many studies that do show the effectiveness. Um, Recently with modern technology, like functional MRIs, we can really show the results. So basically, I'll give you an example. There's a point on the leg that in Chinese medicine corresponds to our vision and it's used to help brighten the eyes. And somehow, I don't know how they knew this, but thousands of years ago that needling this point would help the eyes with modern technology. Like I said, the functional MRI, they've needled this point and the visual area in the brain will light up. So that's really showing the science behind it. And there's numerous studies to to back up the research. Also, insurance companies cover acupuncture. And this is because they know that it works and they have the research to prove it too. Yeah. That's so nice. Even my insurance covers acupuncture and they don't cover anything. I, yeah. I've had the experience. Because it can you know, so, save the system money like for pain. Yeah. Uh, Western MDs are now referring people to get acupuncture or not referring, recommending because in some states they might need a referral, but with uh, California, you don't need a referral from your doctor um, for pain, for back pain and knee pain, along with um, like yoga and Tai Chi are effective too. But it's it's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What is your exercise of choice? Speaking of yoga. Yes. Um, Well, I do love yoga and Actually, I do this interesting martial art called capoeira. Maybe some of you have heard of it. It's this Afro-Brazilian martial art, um, and it's really fun. It mixes like acrobatics and dance, martial arts, and music. Mm -hmm. And I do that in West Hollywood and a fun workout called Fit Arts. That's so fun. Oh, I've seen that on your Instagram. Yeah, that's my husband's gym. (laughs) Oh, I was going to say, I've seen that. I've seen you do that. Instagram. That's Mm -hmm. your husband's jam? Yeah. So that's what he does for a living? That's what he does. And we met doing capoeira. So I was doing it before. Um, (laughs) He's a teacher and he's amazing. So I take his classes. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I want to try it. You should come. I don't have very much coordination on that. You'll learn. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I would love to. It's really fun. That sounds so fun. It sounds like such a freeing way to move Mm -hmm. the body. Yeah. You can express yourself. Yeah, I love it. So we'll head into the rapid fire questions. Okay. Because I know you have someone coming in after me. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, we have five minutes. I know. We were we were just chatting about everything. So I was excited to ask you this one because you've traveled to some pretty cool places. What would be your dream vacation? Well, I absolutely love Thailand. I go there all the time. But I've been seeing so many amazing pictures of Bali that that has to be my next one. I'm going to go there this year. Um, But I definitely love travel. Um, Went to Iceland last year. Mm. And I have to say that's the most amazing place. So dream vacation would be going somewhere and just relaxing and getting massages and getting all that self-care. That's my dream vacation always. And eating good food. Yes. Well, I'm excited for you to go to to Bali. Yes. And I'm excited to go to Thailand for the mm-hmm. first time. Not sure when, but going to. Do you have any mentors? And if so, who are they? Yeah, I would say probably my dad is my biggest mentor. You know, he's an expert in this field. He's like called the elder statesman of acupuncture. Uh, he took the first licensing exam offered in California. Before that, it wasn't even really legal. Wow. Um, So he's my go-to for any difficult cases and he's really just helped me through this process and given me the confidence. Yeah, that's so cool that you have him. Favorite crystal? Favorite crystal. You know what? I'm not not a 
big crystal connoisseur. I think they're beautiful. I'm into the amethyst, I would say. Yeah, yeah. amethyst is so pretty. Yeah. I was going to say, as that question was coming out of my mouth, you don't actually strike me as a crystal person. Yeah, surprisingly, I mean, I'm in this medicine um, and it can be like very hippie and mm-hmm. um, I'm probably kind of hippie, but I'm not like one of these ultra yeah. crystally, but I do think they're amazing and I would love to learn more about them. I just haven't yet. I know yeah. I need to get that Crystal Muse book. It looks yes, amazing. You'll so. love it. Yeah, it seems actually looking around your office, what you're more into is like the really yummy, super healthy desserts and powders that you can add to like yes. a drink, which I'm super obsessed with too. Yes. And I am, yeah, and I herbs. do have a sweet tooth. That is my downfall, but I... I'm all about the addictive wellness chocolates. I just yes, have to say because we love they're addictive amazing. Wellness and they couldn't be nicer. Yeah, they're amazing people and I love that chocolate and it's really helped my sweet tooth. Yeah, because you're getting the sure. chocolate yes. and you're getting like healing and herbs, herbs at the too. same time. Amazing. It totally goes with this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, they'll have to come on soon. I've been talking to them about having them on in yeah. 2018. That would be great. Yeah. If you were a color, what color do you see yourself being? Oh, well, it would definitely be pink. And anyone that knows me, probably like this magenta e fuchsia-ish pink. <laughs> yes, you definitely would. And interesting, I've looked through the color book for your birthday, and that color matches my birthday, which is pretty cool. No way. Cool. Yeah. That's so... I need... What yeah. book is that? It's like, I, they have it at Paper Source. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to see. When's your birthday? April 15th. Tax day. That's a, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good day. Yeah. Um, when I was in college, all the girls that I lived with had birthdays that week. Wow. And then there was me in October, one person mm-hmm. in September, but everybody was like April 17th to the 25th. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a good popular time of the year. Yeah. Magenta. Spring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have a favorite podcast or two? Yeah. Well, of course, The Balanced Blonde. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um I also really like the Bulletproof Radio. Mm. I got into, I downloaded some on my last trip. Yeah, yeah. he's amazing. Really informative. For sure. And who would you geek out over the most if you saw them walking around? Hmm, good question. I'd probably say like one of the ancient Chinese philosophers or something like <laughs> yes. that. I love it. I yeah. love that that's your answer. Like Lao Tzu quotes. And yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. That would be <laughs> so cool. I knew you would have a good one. Yeah. You wouldn't just say like Kim Kardashian. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, wait. But now um, that I'm obsessed with Outlander. <laughs> yeah. Those Maybe authors. like the, the cast. <laughs> yeah. That's always so fun. When you're super into a show and then and you And you're going to have them. to watch it. And it's like, I can't it's amazing. Wait. I'm so excited. All your viewers will love it. Yes. So Kara, since you have to go or in listeners. a second, yeah. tell everyone where they can find you, your Instagram, your practice, everything. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, it is, well, first I'll just say Aculand. Mm-hmm. The name is this like euphoric, dreamy-like state that you get induced by acupuncture. So if you want to go to Aculand, that's uh, that's where you'll be in your acupuncture treatment. That. Yeah, You can find me on my website. It's drkaraaculand.com, D-R-K-A-R-A-A-C-U-L-A-N-D.com. And then Instagram is dr.kara.aculand. Yes, I always have to remember those dots when I'm searching for you. <laughs> or my name, Kara Moore Marco. Oh, yeah. Dash it'll Kendrick. Pop there's only one. Yeah. So I'm cool. the only one. Yeah. Well, we'll put you in the show notes too. Perfect. So it's easy. Thank you so much for being here, for giving us all this knowledge. Thanks so much for having me. It was so of much course. fun. Yay. Bye. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode with the fabulous Kara Mora Marco. She is not only my acupuncturist, but also my friend, someone who I look up to, someone who I have clearly learned so much from, and I know I will continue to. She is such a healer, and I'm so inspired, definitely soul on fire feelings every time I'm with her, and definitely after having this brain-picking conversation with her. So if you loved her, 
care as much as I do, then do be sure to enter our giveaway. You could potentially get a free love cupping session with Kara. And I promise that will not disappoint. So the way to enter is to head to iTunes, leave a rating and review for this podcast, subscribe, and follow Kara Dr. Dr. Dot Kara with a K dot Aculand on Instagram. And then send me a screenshot to Jordan at thebalanceblonde.com. I will enter you. I'll also send you my blogging tips and tricks ebook as an extra thank you that every person will get and one person will win a session with Kara. Also, if you would like to keep the conversation going, head over to Facebook, Soul on Fire Podcast Tribe, join our group, introduce yourself, make some friends in your area, and it's a really good way also to stay up to date on my travels because maybe I will end up coming to your city and doing a meetup or an event or something and we can hang out. It'll be so fun. Thank you guys for being here. I just wanted to send a resounding vibe of love to everyone who is here everyone who takes the time every week or any week to listen to this podcast and support what it is that I'm putting out there and if it resonates with you that makes me incredibly happy podcasting is for sure the highlight of my week every single week and that is because you guys are such awesome listeners and I feel like I have friends all over the world and you guys deserve all of the love and all the gratitude so just know that I am sending it to you now and always. I hope that you have an inspired, creative, soul on fire, an amazing day or night ahead of you and we'll talk soon. Love you guys.